So the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about, you know, how we study social studies, how we study world cultures. You know, we first talked about studying the earth and uncovering the past. Then we talked about, you know, studying history, how we study history. And then today we're going to talk about studying geography. You know, geography is another way that we can study history, study the earth, and figure out what has happened in the past. So for today's lesson, you're going to want to scroll down, if you're on plan book, to sixth grade, go to remote learning. If you're watching the video, you've already clicked here and it is posted. And then you're going to click on geography lesson, studying geography lesson. When you click on that, it'll take you to Teams and you'll need to choose your social, social studies class. When you click on that, then it'll bring you to your assignments. You'll need to scroll down to studying geography. Click on that, and it'll pull up your assignment. The instructions say to watch the video and then fill out the note sheets as you're watching this video. So if we click on the note sheet, it'll pull up this paper. And then you will want to make sure you click edit presentation, click edit in browser. And then you are ready to go. And if you want to, you can definitely zoom in. If you're wanting to zoom in, you'll have to come over here to this arrow, click down, click view, and then you can click zoom. And you can choose how much you want it zoomed in. Click 100, I'll pull it up to about this size. So as we're studying geography, the very first thing that we're going to be looking at is studying places and people. So geography is the study of Earth's physical and cultural features. So in this box here, you're going to put the study of Earth's physical and cultural features typing that into yours. And then if it goes outside of this box, then you can just highlight and make it smaller, and then it'll fit in there nicely. So geography is studying Earth's physical and cultural features. So geography is divided into two main branches. We have physical geography, and we have human geography. We're gonna talk about what those two different things are and how they help us study history. So physical geography is the study of the Earth's land and features. Again, if it's too big, I'll go here. So physical geography is looking at the Earth's lands and features. So that means like physical features, landforms, different things that make up the Earth. You know, some ideas of landforms would be mountains, valleys, plains, and other places that are landforms. So that'd be the natural features of the land surface. It also looks at the climate. So it also studies the climate. Now climate does not mean weather. Weather and climate are two very different things. Like today the weather is sunny and around 70 degrees. That is not what the weather is every day here. So our climate is not 70, de 70 degrees and sunny. Our climate is cold winters and warm summers and mild spring and fall. So climate is the weather over a long period of time. So with physical geography, we're looking at the landforms and we're looking at the climate. So we're looking at landforms and the climate. Then we also talk about human geography. 
So that is the study of people and the places they live. So studying human geography is studying people and the places they live. Studying people and the places they live. Human geography is talking about why do people live where they live? Why did they move there? What affected them to move there? So really the question we're asking is how does their environment affect their life? How does their environment affect their life? You know, some of the questions that human geographers might ask is, you know, how do people live near river, how do people who live near rivers protect themselves from floods? How do people who live in deserts survive? They're going to also look at, you know, do different environments affect the size of families? Do people in certain environments live longer? So they're looking at how do, how does the environment that someone lives in, you know, the weather, the climate, the physical features, that kind of thing, how does that affect their life? So again, we have geography divided into two main branches, we have physical geography and human geography. Geographers also look at location. So they study people and places, but then they also look at location. So location is the exact description of where something is. So that could be, you know, the latitude and longitude. You could be looking at different things. Location is the exact description of where something is. And the neat thing about that is, you know, different locations are going to affect people. Different locations are going to affect people. You know, let's go back to thinking about the desert. You know, the desert people are going to live very differently in the desert than they do up in Alaska. Also, if you think about it, you know, in California, along the coast is where a lot of people will live. But down in the south, there's also a desert, so not as many people will live in the desert as they do along the coast. So the location affects the people, how they live, where they want to live. Some of the information about location, we get that information from maps. If we look at many different types of maps, so you know, you could be looking at physical maps, maps of the climate, what, you know, what the climate is like in different parts of the world, different parts of the area. We could kind of look and compare those to see, you know, how those locations affect where people live or how they live. So we can compare maps to see how physical and human features, so both physical features and human features, are related. So how is the how do the physical features affect the human features, you know, how and where they live? We can also look at maps to learn about regions. So a region is an area with similar attributes or similar, similar characteristics. You know, that could be climate, population, language, religion, you know, different things. So if we look at those maps, you know, we can kind of look and see what the different regions are. In the United States, you know, we have the Southwest, you know, that's typically, you know, the climate desert weather, you know, and that's going to be very different than Florida, which is like the Everglades and different things. The climate in Florida is going to affect how the people live differently than the people in California in the deserts. So regions can be defined either by physical or human features. So these physical or human features can define regions. You know, some of the examples we gave was climate. You know, that can change where and how people live. Population. 
language, and even religion. You know, different areas. People tend to stay in the area with a similar religion or similar language that they speak. So those are some examples of how regions can be divided by physical and human features. We can also learn geography and history affect each other. We can learn about geography through history. We can learn a lot about history from geography as well. So we can learn about ancient cultures by knowing where they lived and what the area was like. I'll make that smaller so you can see it. So we can learn about ancient cultures by knowing where they lived and what the area was like. So let's think about the Native Americans. You know, in fifth grade, we talked about how different Native Americans lived in different places and lived differently because of where they lived. The Woodlands Indians, you know, they lived in the woods and they did a lot of hunting. That's how they got a lot of their resources was from hunting. But then a lot of the coastal Indians got a lot of their food from fishing and farming. So because if an area is not good for farming, the people are not going to depend as much on farming, whereas they'll depend on hunting and gathering more than they will depend on farming. So where they live and what the area is like is going to affect their culture, their customs, and how they live. So like I was saying, you know, geography affects resources. When people were first settling, there was many things that they were looking for. You know, they had to make sure that the place they were settling was going to let them survive. So the early people settled in places that had a lot of resources. So some of those resources might be wood, water. You know, you need the wood to make the shelters, to make tools, so you need water to survive and to water plants. You would also need fertile soil to grow crops. You'd need animals around so you could hunt them for food, use them for help around the farm or for protection. And then you also need stones for tools as well. So those are just some of the examples of how, what resources were available affected where people settled. The first settlements formed along rivers because typically rivers have all of these resources that you need for survival. So they formed along rivers and used fertile land. They didn't have grocery stores to go buy their food, so they had to provide their own food. So they used the fertile land to grow the food, and the rivers provided them the water they needed for survival. They also lived by mountains a lot of the times because mountains provided protection, helped keep invaders out, and kept them safe. So to sum up, you know, both the land what the land is like and the climate, the weather, have shaped history. The land and the weather have influ has influenced where people have moved and how they have lived. So now your guys' assignment is you're going to answer these four questions. There's four questions down here and you're going to use the notes up here to answer those questions. So the first one is what are the two main branches of geography? You're going to click in here and type your answer. Where did early people tend to settle? You know, like, what were they looking for? Where were they wanting to settle by? Click in there and give your answer. Down here, you're going to tell me, how could a river be both a valuable resource, so something that's important and good for them, and a problem for a region? And then finally, you're going to tell me, how has geography shaped human history? So you're going to type in those four answers, and once you have all your notes, and all four answers in, then you're going to click close, and then you'll click turn it in on your side there.
If you have any questions about the information or how to complete the work, message me on Teams, send me an email, or send me a message on Remind.